and welcome to today's uh, the first of today's webinars and the name of the well, this webinar is the Adobe Apps for Education series and we are today focusing on creating home pages with Dreamweaver and what I believe is a new um, a new uh, plugin for Dreamweaver or a new component called CC Extract. And Sherry German, who is a um, a teacher at Mont Montgomery College in Rockville, will be leading us through this. Sherry is like the Dreamweaver guru in my world. So um, Sherry's going to be leading us through this. Are you there, Sherry? I sure am. And I see Mark. Mark is here. Mark, I'm going to ask you a favor. If people are chatting and have questions, perhaps you can help me out because I'm going to keep my screen sharing very simple so I don't lose audio again. So I'm hoping my buddy Mark, who is another Dreamweaver expert, I'm hoping he'll answer some questions for me while we're moving along. And, and he says he's glad. Terrific. Fantastic. So um, all our, all our uh, resources, Sherry's created a really fantastic resource if you want to share your screen, Sherry, in Adobe Education Exchange with all the how-to guides and you can step through this. And the link is just there. The session recording will go onto that link as well. Um, are you sharing your screen there, Sherry? Have I lost you? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I'm just waiting to the last minute. <laughs> okay. and I don't want you have to wait. <laughs> OK, and if you have a Yes, we can. Terrific. Um, if, you if you do have any questions during this session, please just pop them into these questions for our presenter and we'll answer them at the end of the session. So over to you, Sherry, to do your thing. Thanks, everyone. Okay. I know that um, we have a lot of students who tend to be better at the code side of things and then I have other students who are better at the design side of things. So what this extract is doing is attempting to help students get that left and right brain working together. And I'll show you what I mean here. Let me give you an overview of what we're going to do today. And we're going to go into Photoshop and we're going to be building this PSD. So there's the design. And there's quite a cottage industry that lets people uh, give their PSDs over to you know somebody who's going to charge you for it and then turn it into code. But what we're going to do is take that design in PSD and we are going to build a web page from it. And here's the example of what we're going to build. Looks like the PSD, right? So that's what the new extract panel does for you. So let's see how that all works. We're going to start in Photoshop. And I'm going to give you some best practices that will help you really always be keeping in mind how that HTML page is going to look. And of course, you should always teach your students to start with sketches and then a wireframe. So this is going to help you keep that final HTML in mind. We're going to have just a logo div here side by side with a navigation. We're going to have a background image here, one of those big images, which are all the rage right now. We're going to have some about text about the musician and then an image. So that's all this is, a very simple design, just so you can get used to all the features of Extract. So this is what we're going to build and then bring into Dreamweaver and use the Extract panel. So let's begin. We're going to go to File New and we're going to use a common website. We're going to be doing fixed width right now, but in the afternoon session, I'll be showing you how you can do responsive web design and percentages and layer comps for different versions of the site. But we're going to keep it simple to begin. And we'll just save this as JSG Violist. And again, the step-by-step -step directions for this, almost closed captioning, are all in those resources on the edX. So there are three things I want you to keep in mind. First, get your swatches put together. Get your color scheme put together. And you can see I've got just two simple colors in mine. And I just did that very easily by going into the color picker, choosing my color, and then add to swatches. And bingo, there it is. The second thing you want to take advantage of, something relatively new to Photoshop, is the new layout guide. You used to have to use guide guide. 
a plugin to do this, but now you can set up your number of columns, your rows, the width for each of them. And I'm just going to use a nice basic little rule of thirds here and say OK to that. So that's my second little best practice. Now my third is really important, and that is the semantic naming of layers. If you name your layers so that they associate or correspond with the divs and the elements you're going to use in Dreamweaver, you're going to make your life much easier. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new layer. Let me move my Adobe Connect thing over here. Let me minimize this. OK, and I'm going to go down to my new layer. And what's going to be the first one? The body tag. And I am going to go to my shape tool. And I'm going to cover the whole canvas there. And I can fine tune it. I always keep my properties panel open here. 1280 by 120, excuse me, um, by 1000. And we're going to make sure it's at the X and Y zero coordinates. Then we're going to go over to Fill. We're going to choose Gradient. We're going to use colors from the color scheme. The left color is going to be the dark red. The right color is going to be the burnt orange. And then I want this to go from left to right, so I'm going to change my angle right there. And there we go. We've got the body. And I'm going to lock that. That's another thing I would say to you to do. Try to keep things locked as you move along. All right, we're going to get our next layer in place. And that's going to be our big image. So before we name that layer, we're going to go to Place Embedded. And we're going to go to my resources here. Whoops. That's where my resources are, right in here. And we're going to find the viola image. Great big image. It's going to cover the page. And we're going to hit Enter to place that. We're going to change this layer so that it's content BG, background, because this is going to be the background image for the content layer. So I think you see where I'm going with this. I'm keeping the name so that it's going to be really easy to drop things in when I build my web page. And now I'm going to lock that one. And I'm going to go to my next one. And I'm going to wait before I go to that next one. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to move this up to 125. And now I'm going to drag some guides in. Always use your rulers and guides. And I'm going to make everything about 20 pixels from the other elements. So this is going to be about 145. This is going to be about 824, and I'm just going to be approximate for now. And then I'm going to drag one more guide in over here at 1260. And then I'm going to create a new layer. And this is going to be the About text. So again, we're going to be having a div with that name later. So I'm going to go over again to my shapes, and I'm going to draw out a shape square and it's going to be my red color but I'm going to be using some RGBA color later so I'm going to make this 80 percent and you're going to see a cool thing in extract that's going to help you with that all right now we've got that we can lock that the next thing we're going to do is place one more image and we're going to go to the musician we're going to hit return to enter that I'm going to move to my move tool Move this up to the left side. And now I'm going to show you a little trick for wrapping text in Photoshop. I'm going to take my marquee tool. And I'm going to draw a marquee around this. And then I'm going to draw another one with the Option key down on the Mac or the Alt key down on the PC so that I'm subtracting that. This doesn't look too good. Let me try this one more time. I'm going to make sure I really get this in here. And then I'm going to do my subtraction. And then I'm going to right click on this and make this a work path. Then I'll open up one more document. You've got a about text document in the resources. Then I'm going to go to my text tool. 
make sure I've got white text or something there about. I'm going to make this 16 pixels. I'm going to make sure it's Arial Regular. I'm going to click. I'm going to paste. And all my text is going to wrap around. This is a little rough. I've got a finished one that's going to be a little more pixel perfect. All right, now we're going to create the header div. So I'm going to do another new layer. I'm going to call this header. And this is going to correspond to the header in the document. And I'm going to draw another shape. And again, this is our red color. So we're going to click on the fill, go to the red here. And then we're going to go again to the text tool. We're going to click right in there by one of our guides. We're going to go to 54 pixels. And all of these measurements are all in the resource document. So you can actually have your students follow along with this exactly. And then I'm going to type in here Oops, my typing this morning. And I'll just take my move tool and I'm going to move this right about there. Then I'm going to go over to type add fonts from Typekit. And actually, I've got this set up right in here. So let's go here. And I selected script. And I went over to Lush, the Lush script. I say use font. And I sync it. Mine is already synced. But you'll see sync to your Creative Cloud desktop. And now it's going to be available to work with in Photoshop. So now I'm going to go to my text tool, and I'm going to select this, go up here. I'm going to filter for just the Typekit fonts, go to Lush Regular, and bingo. There it is. It fits right within. Now, just one more thing to do, then we're going to take this into Extract. I'm going to drag another guide in to where my text starts, another guide to where it ends, and a guide at the baseline of my heading. And then I can just add in, change this back to 18, change this back to my Arial. And I can start putting in all of the links. Hi everyone, I will just sort out what's happening here, so don't mind me while I've uh, while I just try to um, get Sherry. Okay, hey Sherry, Sherry, stop! I'm going to change. Don't mind this. I just have to do this, guys, to interrupt her so that she can uh, understand that we've lost our audio. Sherry, are you there? Sherry, we've lost your audio. Uh, we just need you to um, try that again for me. I'm not too sure if you're in the session. Okay, you come back into the session. All right, everyone. So just while we're waiting for that, call that intermission. Uh, this afternoon we do have another webinar coming up. Uh, Sherry will be back in just a second. I know she will be. Um, but we have another webinar this afternoon around teaching creativity, uh, teaching for creativity in the Common Core. And that is at 1 p.m. PDT. Uh, so we do hope you'll join us for that. She's just gone out of the room. She'll be back in a second. And that is a lovely, that'll be a really cool, it's an hour long, and Kelly Kermode will be leading that session 
with Dr. Bargetto from, oh, I've forgotten which university it is, from the, he's an associate professor at the University of Oregon. And he'll be joining us for that. Sherry, you are back in the room. I can see you now. I'm just making you into a host. Are you there, Sherry? And this video, all these session recording, will be available. Talk to me, Sherry. Oh, she's probably doing just the audio sound check at the moment. Can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? I can. I can indeed. Let's did, just did change back to our screen. Okay, did you see the Photoshop? We had finished the Photoshop. Everybody saw that, right? So now we're going to yeah. bring it into Dreamweaver, and we've got time. Fortunately, we I built in a little bit of time here, so we should still be able to get through it. Everybody can hear me, correct? Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so let's go into Dreamweaver now. Okay, and here we are with the extract panel. And just so you're aware, yes, thank you everybody for bearing with me. I don't know what's going on with this today, but I wonder if it's because of the weather. My Verizon Fios is just acting up. I don't know. But just to be aware, there are extract preferences where you can change your preferred font. You can change the format for your images. So you do have some options there. And of course, everyone should know who uses Dreamweaver. And if you're not, I see that there were some people that don't have familiarity with Dreamweaver. I do put in the resource file a link to a six-part Dreamweaver, building your first page in Dreamweaver that'll teach you all these basics. But in case you don't know, you should always build a new site. And I've already done that. I've got a site that I call Extract, and I have an empty images folder in there. So the first thing you would do is upload your PSD. And this will go up to your assets in your Creative Cloud desktop. You'll be able to access it from there. So now that I've uploaded this, I'm going to actually click on my PSD. So there it is, right in Dreamweaver. So now I'm going to create a new file, just a new blank HTML5 page. And I'm going to name it index. A good name for a first page. And what we're going to do this morning is we're going to build the content part of a web standards equation. For web standards, you put all your content into the HTML page and you put all your design into the CSS. So Extract helps you with both of those. It helps you with the text and the images that are going to go into the HTML page. And then it's going to help you with CSS Designer making measurements, getting everything pixel perfect. So we're going to do something a little tricky today. We're going to use Live View. You can enter your divs into Code View. You can enter them in Design View. But Live View is the big upcoming thing in Dreamweaver. The team really wants us to learn to use Live View so that eventually we can work completely in there. And you can actually build this whole thing right in Live View. So we're going to go over here to the Insert panel, make sure it's set to the Structure, and then we're going to go Div. We're going to give that name Container. That's going to be the big container, the suitcase that everything's going to go into, and we're going to embed it in the head of the document. So we'll just hit Return for that. Now, I want the container to be empty and everything nested inside it, so I'm deleting the placeholder text then I'm clicking on the container at the bottom of the document window. And then I'm going to click again, my insert panel. And this time, I'm going to put in the header and nest it inside the container. Again, we're going to get rid of that placeholder text because, again, I want to nest my logo and navigation inside the header. If you'll think back to what we did with the wireframe. So I'm going to create another div inside that, nest it. It's going to be dot logo for the logo. And it's going to again be in the head of the document. And now I'm going to click on logo at the bottom here. I'm going to put in a heading one, nest that inside. And that's going to be Joseph oops, Scott German the oldest. Then I'm going to click the logo 
And I'm going to do another insert to do another navigation. This is going to be our nav div. It's going to be after the logo. Get rid of that placeholder text. Click the nav. So you see I'm going back and forth between using the tag selector down here to select the div or the element that I want things to nest in or go after. And in this case, I would like to nest an unordered list. And now I'm going to enter in home, concerts, gallery, media, contact me. And then I can even add dummy links to these so that we can make them behave like links. You see it's got this little formatting panel right here. And then our last one. And now we're almost to the extract magic, so bear with me one more minute. Okay, that one didn't want to take. Let's try that one more time. All right, now we're going to go to the header because we want that content div that we're going to put that big viola picture behind. We want to do another div that's going to be after the header. We're going to call that dot content. Get rid of that placeholder text. Select content. And then we're going to insert within that div the about text. And now, this is where some magic happens. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to click on the about text over here. And look what we've got, a button to actually copy that real text. So I'm going to copy that text, come over here, and paste it in. Whoops. See, copy text and paste it in. And then I can just format that a little bit. I'm going to put the paragraph returns in. It doesn't save that for you, but it does give you the text. You can actually copy that right out of the extract panel. And then I can use Live View. Like I can select this education. I'm going to hit Command T to bring up the tag editor and change that to an H3. And then I'm going to select each of these, change them into an unordered list. As my grandmother used to say, the hurrier I go, the behinder I get. So let me slow down here. I'm just trying to make these into an unordered list. And then we have just one more thing to do, and that is to get the image of the musician right here by the paragraph. So now I'm going to go to the Layers button, and I could download and I could put it into my site, but I'm going to do something a little easier. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it, drag it out, and I'm going to get a little precision tool, and I can drill down to where I want that to go. And I want that to go in the first paragraph of my About text. So I'm going to drop it right there. And it's going to give me the opportunity to put this in my Images folder. So I'm going to go IMG to put it in Images slash. And I don't want it to be a PNG. So there, I'm going to make it a JPEG. So I can actually tell it, tell it to just change that from a PNG format to a JPEG. And then here it is. It's dropping it in. It should be dropping it in. And we'll just drop it in like that for now. For some reason it's not, but that's what it should be doing. And then you can open up and you can put in your alt text and anything you want. So that's basically how you get Photoshop document put together, then you get your content put together in Dreamweaver, and then this afternoon we'll look at how we can actually design the page, get all the CSS into it with pixel perfection. Fantastic. That's awesome, Sherry. Thank you so much. That's really cool. There aren't, are there any questions at this stage for Sherry? I think you've done such a wonderful job. 
that um, I think we've begun the process and this afternoon at 3 p.m. PDT we'll finish that. Don't forget that all resources are in the um, and the session recordings for you to work through afterwards are in this session here and we'd love to see you come back for that. Sherry, did you have anything you wanted to say to finish this session with at all? Um, no, just that in the site, the example site, there is this structure already built. If they want to just start with the structure and play along with the CSS this afternoon, that's already built for them. Plus, there's a CSS starter page for those who are not familiar with floating divs and all that kind of thing in Dreamweaver so that people can start with that if they prefer to. Oh, that's fantastic. Great advice. So if you've got a couple of spare time, uh, spare hours or a half an hour during the day, pop onto that resource and download and then you can work along with Sherry this afternoon. Or, um, but either way, we will see you at 3 p.m. Pacific time um, for the next session. So thank you very much for doing that, Sherry. And we'll see you just, everyone, if I just need you to click on the on the review for us in the little feedback box. That would be wonderful. And uh, we will see you this afternoon. All right, everyone, take care. Thanks, Sherry. I'm just going to leave it open for people to click on the feedback for me. Thank you very much. Oh, that's great, Muhammad. I hope you'll have a bit of a, a nice play during the day, and we'll see you later if it's not too late for you, that is. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Nicola. All right. I think I might just uh, hang on, Sherry. Hang on there for me. See you later, everyone. Okay, Sherry. Is everybody out of the room now? Um, yeah, they're all on hold. So I pop them on hold, and then when I shut the room, they get booted out. So all good to go. They can't hear us, right. so that's fine. I don't know what's going on with the sound. That was very frustrating. Um, sure it was. You did a great cover, though. Thank you so much. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on.